everybody. <laughs> What's up? Do we have any uh, Soten fans in the crowd? I'm sure there's plenty of Soten fans at home. Thank you so much for uh, donating and allowing me to run my favorite video game of all time, being played in one of my favorite ways of all time, the Castlevania Symphony of the Night Randomizer. Um, the Randomizer randomizes all of the key items, all of the item drops that I'm going to be getting. And this is the Lycanthrope preset, which means I'm going to start with all of the Wolf Relics, which allows for a lot of speed, a lot of fast movement, and we're going to see all that as soon as I get into this run. Are you guys ready? We're going to count down from 10, starting from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and go! What is up, everybody? So this is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. The prologue section is pretty much unchanged in this uh, randomizer. This is to maintain, like, consistency. Essentially, the only things that will be randomized are stuff that Alucard uh, interacts with. So this section is kind of on a script. Um, I'm grabbing a certain number of hearts and getting rid of them in a certain way because it changes the stats that I get at the end of this prologue sequence as well as giving me a few extra random item chances. There is a glitch that I'm going for here, which is called damage stacking. You have a random chance if you throw a Holy Water after Hydro Storming to do a lot of damage. It's chunking him much more than it would otherwise. I'm also ending the fight with the cross in my inventory. This is... Very nice. Yeah. This is so I start with a little bit of extra magic, and magic is super important for moving in this run. All of your movement is going to be tied to magic. Um, and the Leg and Throw preset is really nice because the magic is a little bit discounted, actually, for all of your wolf movement. And the wolf movement is very fast, as I was talking about earlier, and we're going to see it in action in the very first trick of the run, which is Death Skip. Normally, there's a cutscene where Death takes away all of your starting gear, and even though it's a randomizer, our starting gear is super useful. We do start with a preset uh, gear, including a very powerful weapon called the Shield Rod, which is very useful in uh, conjunction with uh, spells that involve the shield. So uh, I'm going to be running as the wolf. This is not normal in the video game uh, unless you're playing this preset of the randomizer. So this movement is only possible due to the randomizer. And that is a random item drop there, the lunch A. And here we are going for a death skip. I'm going to go for a quick setup to jump, untransform during the cutscene, pushes me past the cutscene itself. Death never gets a chance to talk to me and take away my gear. Um, another thing to note about the randomizer is a lot of the aesthetics of the run are also randomized, like my cake color there is random. Uh, this item drop is guaranteed and is random, as well as this one. And Fist of Tolkien! Nice. Let's go. And that is useless. That is junk. I do not <laughs> need that. Uh, so that was the first relic of the run. It was a familiar card. Familiars are pretty much unimportant in this run. I won't be using them at all. Um, that item that I picked up, I also won't be equipping right away because it's unoptimal to actually open my menu to equip it when there are still more item checks to be done uh, before the first boss of the run. So I'd rather uh, maintain all of the menuing uh, in like the same place. I want to do it all in the same place. So there's one more item check potential uh, potentially for me coming up here. And then if I don't get anything there, I will equip. Oh, it's not here. OK, sometimes items just don't appear to save memory. Um, it is kind of a technical miracle that this game even has a randomizer. This game is not, <laughs> it doesn't like to be tampered with. Any um, modification to the game can often cause it to crash. So the fact that Wild Mouse was able to create a randomizer that works perfectly every time with no soft locks, no bugs, no crashes is absolutely insane. And we're coming up on that very first boss fight here, Slogger and Gaibon. And uh, we get to show off the power of the Fist of Tolkis. I'm also going to enter the room using a wolf charge just to speed uh, some things up. Get into the room a little bit quicker. And yeah, that's already dead. Uh, can you please get down here, sir? Thank you. And there we are. That's the first boss done. Yeah, good old Tetris Spear. For those that don't really know about the special skills and abilities that Alucard can possibly have in Symphony of the Night, there are these special abilities that kind of are activated by fighting game inputs like Horse of the Forwards and all that stuff. The Tetris Spirit that you saw was a charge up, and then you're doing a half circle all the way down. It takes a considerable amount of mana, but is a really, really great strat for disposing of Slogger and Gaiba. That item I just got there, the Dark Shield, is a pretty decent shield. Uh, an important thing to note about Symphony of the Night is shields are really nice because the main movement I'm doing here outside of the wolf movement is called shield dashing. So the ability to cancel my back dash by pulling out my shield is really nice. And the Dark Shield is a nice shield um, for shield dashing because it also has a hitbox. So I can use the shield to do damage to enemies so I don't have to stop what I'm doing. Okay, that is a useless sword. <laughs> Literally the worst sword in the game. Minus 30 attack on that sword for no reason. It's just a joke sword. So I will not be using that. And that is Echo of Bat down there. I can see it through the um, stairs down there. It allows me to check that relic a little bit quicker, and I can leave knowing that it is junk. 
Um, but yeah, so I'll probably be equipping the Dark Shield whenever I get a chance to open the menu. It's not like worth opening the menu just to put it on, but if I find myself in an opportunity to menu, I'll put it on. Um, yeah, this is more like wolf movement, so if you're running up a slope and then jump while um, controlling the wolf, it, you actually maintain your mo momentum uh, out of those uh, sloped jumps, allowing you to gain height in um, really interesting ways. We're going to be taking advantage of that in a lot of different places here. Oh, come on, get up there. The wolf movement is insanely tricky, by the way. Uh, I was talking about it a little bit before in the interview with Kizaron that the wolf strats were never really, like, developed for a long period of this game's lifespan because you never really get all of the wolf movement right at the start, so there was no reason to, like, route out the wolf movement. But since we already have it, like, going through this room, I'm just zooming through fully invincible and a room that would normally take, like, over a minute to go through casually, we're through in, like, 10 seconds. Mm. Uh, the main thing... Oh, another trick is actually coming up right here. There is a boss normally that you would fight, and we're going to be taking advantage of those slope mechanics right here. Jump up the slope all the way up here. Nice job. Skipping a boss fight that is normally to the left of us. That is another useless sword. It looks cool. <laughs> it has a cool summon mechanic. I will not be using it because those summons have uh, bugged scaling, and they only do one damage. So it's not worth uh, using them. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's, it looks really cool when you um, mess around with it casually but you realize this is not doing any damage. I, I, I should stop. <laughs> um, here we're in the long library. Most speedruns never enter the long library first. The reason we're here is because we need to check more relic locations. So every location that would normally have a relic uh, has the potential to be a random relic for us. And this uh, game also, um, the randomizer has a, a built-in logic that goes off of a complexity scaling system. Um, it sounds complicated, but in general, that's kind of a useless relic, but you know, it, it might come in handy. The complexity scaling system essentially means that um, in order to beat the game, because it's a randomizer, you could just randomly stumble upon, per se, all the items you need to beat the game right away. So in order to kind of extend the playthrough and make it a little bit more um, reasonable, the complexity system essentially requires Echo Vat. I will pick that up, that is useful. Um, I'm gonna real quick read the shop here. All these items are randomized, so I have to see if there's anything worth picking up. Uh, Dark Blade might be worth. Uh, Alucard Sword is really nice. Alucard Shield, kind of a bait. The Alucard Shield is very good, but the Alucard is not. And ooh, a Varda, that is 4, 000, available. Yeah. It does increase my stats a lot. Okay, if I find money, it might be worth coming back here. Um, so the complexity system. Uh, essentially, this uh, randomizer preset runs on the complexity system, essentially meaning that every time you find a relic, uh, I have to make sure to not forget this relic check, actually. Every time you find a relic, um, it basically is telling you that it's likely, I need more speed, it's likely that the next relic that you're going to find that is important is going to be guarded in a location that required the relic you need before. So, for example, uh, wow, this is useless. I should have just skipped it. Um, for example, if you find the ability to fly, it's likely that the next required thing you need is in a location that is locked behind flight. So essentially uh, a big portion of routing these types of seeds out is you're going to be seeing me do what is known as chasing the complexity, which is just going from one location to another uh, that is finally unlocked by finding new um, items. So far we found no progression. Uh, specific items, so the last possible spot for a progression item this early on is going to be the Soul of Wolf location at the elevator. So that is guaranteed to be some form of progression, so let's see what it is. If that was a little bit of like, you know, word vomit, don't worry. Uh, if you are really interested in Sympathy of the Night Randomizer, the Randomizer community has a whole slew of information, good gravity boots there. Yep. Um, especially a, a, a member named Dinner Dog. He actually kind of broke down, decomposed all the, you know, de, you know, yeah, decomposed this game. In <laughs> kind of like two. So uh, if you look up, uh, look up his tutorials on YouTube, you can probably understand complexity a lot better. And we've been actually using these as kind of like a guide, a rule of thumb for the current uh, randomizer tournament that's been going on, which actually uses this very preset. Yeah, this has kind of become like a, a speedrunner's favorite uh, as far as like a racing preset and a speedrunning preset because it gives you access to a lot of interesting movement options and it, uh, it, it is stayed fresh even though we've been racing it for like over a year now. And this tournament's been going on for a while too, so. And it's, you're still finding new seeds and new types of seeds all the time. We just picked up the gravity boots there. This allows me to do a very big jump, but in the normal game, it's expected that you always have access to the leap stone when you get uh, gravity boots, but we don't have the leap stone. That's normally your double jump ability. Um, 
So gravity boots on their own normally don't allow you to fly. However, we're taking advantage of a untransformed mechanic to allow us to do multiple gravity jumps. This was another relic location. Happens to be barren. Um, that multiple gravity jumps is not possible unless you are untrans specifically untransforming or if you have access to a dive kick, which um, you get from double jumping, or if you have a thrust type sword. Those are the only ways to do multiple gravity jumps. And um, the logic for the randomizer is designed such that with zero knowledge of the speedrunning mechanics or extra like tricks or anything like that, you should finish the game. You should be able to finish the game. So we can actually take advantage of the fact that the in-game logic doesn't think that we should be able to fly right now. However, we can. So we can actually check locations that are deeper in the complexity chain, potentially. Um, which gives us access to potentially even skip uh, some relics. Oh, there we go. Nice. Good that was pretty decent movement there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, these locations, these breakable walls, are always worth breaking open because they have the potential to be pretty useful items. They're the only ones that are slightly weighted to be throwable type weapons or items. So didn't find anything too useful there, but here's the Fist of Tolkis going to work. <laughs> it's actually have a, a couple of special moves for the Fist of Tolkis. Uh, if you put input a quarter circle forward in attack motion, you actually shoot out a fireball. Kind of like <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, back forward attack is the uh, Fist of Fury. The uh, Is that a JoJo's reference? Yes, it is. It is actually a JoJo's <laughs> reference. And here we go again, okay. taking advantage of the multiple gravity jumps to check this location out of logic. And, ooh, miss! Okay, that's a great, that's the uh, one of the three transformation. Oh, Moonstone's nice too. One of the three transformation relics. So we could take advantage of uh, locations that are locked behind the mist uh, gates that exist in this game. And if we find anything that's locked behind a mist gate, uh, we will know that it is an out of logic check, which means that it is potentially higher in the complexity chain. Um, and gold ring also out of logic. Nice. Okay, we're getting a lot of good stuff, potential. Uh, Items and relics that unlock more places. Same with Jewel of Open. All three of those very useful. Um, Castle Keep absolutely loaded. Okay, can you? I'm trying to do something cool, please. Thank you. So this is another uh, example of wolf movement that only exists because of people pushing the randomizer meta. Like that sequence right there was invented by a player known as Fire1520. Shout out to him. I'm going to be shouting him out a lot during this uh, randomizer because he's invented like 90% of the strats that I'm using. Um, and uh, yeah, now that we have Jewel of Open, that means the game wants me to go to the caverns. Um, I do want to hold off going to the caverns right away. I know I talked about that whole complexity chasing thing. However, since I do have out-of-logic flight, I kind of want to clean up all the flight locations first. Uh, so we're going to be doing a quick detour to check those. Because um, not only do you want to chase complexity often, uh, there are uh, the requirements to beat the game which is the Holy Glasses to get to the second castle and the five pieces of Vlad, the five Vlad relics, to unlock the final fight. And um, four out of those five Vlad relics can be literally anywhere. They're just randomly distributed. Um, whereas the final one is like considered the last thing you need to beat the game. And uh, that will be in the eighth location, the eighth complexity spot. Let's check this real quick. Okay, anti-venom, that's fine. But yeah, I would say now, since we're just doing a little bit of relic cleanup and we, until we get like a new ability, now would be a great time for some donations. Absolutely. I have a $10 donation from Matthias Di Giovanni. Let's go, DB. <laughs> Happy to see you showing off how cool and underrated Wolf Movement is in SOTN. Best of luck from Brazil. Thank you so much. The movement on the wolf is really, really cool. I have $25 from Woat. Looking forward to seeing the SOTN run. And for Creature, too, as always, have absolutely nothing. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's, he never has anything. <laughs> but on the other hand, I also have a donation that says uh, it's from the B-Boys for $500. SOTN randomizer tip, always skip Creature. Or was that never skip Creature? Oh, nice. Keep observing. Yeah, uh, Creature's kind of a... <laughs> Uh, a meme in the, the racing community because one of the fastest ways to save time in the randomizer is to make educated guesses as to where the relics could be based off of reading the, the, you know, the complexity and the logic of the randomizer itself. And uh, very often there is one place that you don't want to go to because it's pretty far out of the way, but it has an... What is it? Uh, at that point in time, it's often a 20% chance to be an important relic or the exact thing you need. But it's also an 80% chance if you skip it to save like two minutes. So it's kind of a meme to always skip creature to save that time. It's It's been the point of contention. Actually, it's been such a pivotal point for like a lot of the uh, 
randomizer tournament matches even. Like the last uh, couple matches in the upper bracket alone, I've had, there goes one piece of Exodia. But I have had to <laughs> cast like three creature seeds. Yeah. And I'm just, and, and like me and the other commentator were just like, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. Why do you do this? <laughs> yep. It's a 20% chance some of the time and 100% chance all the other times. But yeah, we got our first piece of Vlad here. This is one fifth of the uh, the quest kind of done to, to beating the game. But trust me, there's still plenty more uh, to go through because finding those uh, other Vlad relics, like I said, they are completely random uh, in their distribution. They can be pretty much anywhere. Um, real quick, let me see the map. Yeah, okay. So here's the plan. The game wants me to go to the caverns. The caverns is kind of slow uh, and out of the way. And leaving the caverns in particular is uh, pretty annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a warp in the All Roxas quarters that I'll be using uh, later once I'm done with the caverns. So that way I, ha I at least have enough. Oh, Ooh, actually, alrighty. this might change the change of plans. Uh, silver ring plus gold ring is the uh, combination of items you need to open uh, conveniently. This location right below us, the clock room. In the normal game, this is where you get the holy glasses that unlocks the ability to go to the second castle. Um, but this could be anything. And the fact that gold ring was flight locked means this has a pretty high likelihood to be important. So uh, we just have to wait for this cutscene and see what's down here. Um, depending on, on what's here, I might change my route. But for right now, my idea is go to Alrox's quarters, do a few checks, get the, the warp for safety, and then go down into the catacombs. Um, but all that might change depending on what we find here. It's like we're waiting with bated breath. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, this is, that, that is honestly the worst part about doing these tournament matches is waiting for like the, the cutscenes to go and you're just like sitting there like, oh man, I need to find something here. I really hope there's something. And there's nothing you do, you just gotta wait. The tension builds, your hands start shaking, you start sweating. And what do we find? It is, ooh. Mm -hmm. Holy, Holy glasses. glasses! Is this Nella. even? Is this even? Not even Wait, random. Oh my god. Okay, I think the randomizer's broke, guys. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's what's normally the. Oh, where am I going? Uh, so, yeah. The Holy Glasses gives us access to the second castle, which is required. Get up there. Yeah, moving with just gravity boots and uh, wolf is a little bit awkward because the game doesn't expect you to use that as your primary form of movement, um, especially to like fly around and stuff. So. Yeah, there's likely something important in the second castle. Um, it's not worth going there right now. Um, in my mind, there's a couple different ways the seed could go. And I think the most conservative and the, like the most safe route, I should say, the safest route that we can go for uh, to make sure that we don't like skip something super duper important and lose a ton of time would probably be to just check as much as I can, do a um, what is known as like a density uh, priority. So I'm just prioritizing, checking as many things as I can as fast as I can, and not necessarily worrying about chasing the complexity. I, my, my, my plans have kind of changed at this point because we have too many options. Normally, the randomizer will either give you like one set linear path or it'll open up like this and then you have to make some tough decisions. And uh, ooh, mm, we need that. That's Exodia right there. That is not a tough decision. I 100% nope. need that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I thought. Oh, uh, you are right. I do have missed. Why yeah, am I? You do. <laughs> <laughs> That is Missed another. Foot pass. <laughs> there you go. There you that, go. Two pieces right there. That is another uh, part about the randomizer. Sometimes you need to remember all the options that you had because you didn't start with the uh, start with them. So, thank you for the clutch, uh, telling me to remember the mist. This is the save room. I'm going to be using this throughout the run to mostly refill my magic. Um, right there, I was pretty low on magic. This save animation is uh, forced onto you the first time. But every subsequent time I fin uh, go to a save room, I can cancel that save animation and basically refill instantly. And uh, actually, now that I have missed, maybe we don't go to caverns right away. Um, what are you thinking? This is a tough call. I know that the intended form of flight is in the caverns, and I think, oh man, this is a really tough call. And I have to make the decision right now. Um, I only have, how many Vlad relics? Two? Yeah, two out of five. Yeah, I should go to the caverns. Okay. Um, to make sure that I don't accidentally miss a Vlad Relic, I think it is most important to, like I said, check check pretty much everything. Um, yeah, this is why we open up the teleport rooms to begin with. Uh, trying to head back up here into Old Rox's quarters is actually quite the hop and skip if you are if you didn't have that open. One of the quality of life changes, actually, that the randomizer does, which I absolutely love, is um, this uh, room. There's normally a statue that blocks your way. 50% of the time, every other minute, there's a statue that blocks your way into Old Rox's quarters. It is always open. Uh, in the randomizer, so you don't have to worry about 
sitting there waiting awkwardly for a minute um, to, to finish the route that you're trying to uh, go on just because you happen to get an unlucky cycle. But yeah, now we're going to be using that jewel of open here. The reason that you need it is to open these blue doors. It's just a key that opens blue doors. We press that switch, which will give us access to the caverns. A small adjustment to uh, transform into the wolf just as the blue door is closing as well. Yeah, you can buffer inputs out of those um, blue door transitions. Not the red door transitions, funny enough. Mm -hmm. At least not in this version of the game. And uh, there are quite a few checks here in the caverns. Um, we can actually do a cool skip here. The wolf charge actually like floats in the air for a little while. So we can use that to um, go over that gap here to go to this area, which does have a boss fight and a uh, relic check for us. Also shout out to the randomized music because uh, this song is a bop. Ah, peanuts. Oh, oh mana prism, let's, let's go. go. That is a one-time use uh, full refill of your magic bar. And uh, if we happen to find a particular uh, equipment item, uh, it might become an infinite use item. <laughs> that is the duplicator, of course, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful item in the game. Mm. But of course, this is a randomizer, so uh, whether we see it or not is random. And coming up is uh, a lot of people's favorite boss. I don't understand why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No clue. Darkling, I smell your blood. The voice acting is actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nothing. No. Okay, whatever. Big zilch. It's fine. Um, so an important thing to know is you're not always going to get a relic um, in this preset because we already started with three. We started with the wolf, the skill of wolf, and the power of wolf, uh, giving us access to this wolf movement. And um, so some of the relics just don't exist. So you're going to go there, you're going to check, and you're going to find nothing. <laughs> Mark. So, uh, coming up here is probably the, like, were, like, is this even a boss? Like, no. That's not the boss. <laughs> However, this next boss is supposed to be somewhat intimidating. Uh, here's some cool wolf, wolf movement to avoid the water there. Let's go. And, um, yeah, this is another boss that is... Dead. A boss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also despawning the boss just to save uh, on lag frames because this game can be quite laggy. All right, what do we have here? Uh, I think it is Nato? Nato? I'm not going to yeah. try to pronounce it. It's a food Nato? item that uh, heals for like four. It's useless. Uh, yeah, so so far the cavern's uh, pretty barren. Um, surely, surely we'll find something soon, right? Uh, it's, it yeah. is a long trek. To the other side, the west end of the caverns, and uh, in competitive, this could be considered either a good, you know, a, a big time loss, or whether your opponent decides to diverge from you or not. Like, let's say an opponent decides to go all the way down here, um, it could be the pivotal moment between a win and a loss. Something also important I will note later about the room that we just passed with that wooden bridge. Um, there's been some uh, new technology, a lot of new tech discovered in this game uh, over the last like year, I would say. Uh, and that room has something very special that I don't want to spoil until we get back there. But yeah, needless to say, it is amazing to me that this game is over, what, 25 years old, 26 years old? And we're still finding new stuff, like, literally yesterday. We found a new glitch <laughs> yesterday. So, uh, nothing. Oh, okay, well, you on? know, it's yeah. fine. The game just wants me to talk to our old pal, the ferryman. So, <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I, lo I love the voice. That <laughs> I'll take you to a place <laughs> which might be interesting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the OG voice acting, it, it hits different. All right, I am taking damage while I'm in the water, but it's fine. HP is kind of a resource in this game. You're very um, unlikely to die if you know what you're doing. Um, so I'm not scared of, like, going down to, like, this much HP at all. Let's see, let's see. So coming up, we have the... Uh, oh, no, no, not like this! I ran out of magic. We're fine. So I do have to wait for my magic to refill here, which is unfortunate. Um, actually, I won't wait. I'll just use the Mana Prism. I should also put the Mystic Pendant back on because that will increase my MP regeneration rate. Mm. There's my MP back. I'll put... Uh, yeah, Kingstone's a, uh, a lot of decisions to make. A lot of decisions. Okay. So 
We're coming back over to that bridge room. So recently we discovered there was some leftover uh, developer code in the game that exists on original hardware. This is uh, in the official version of the game. If you have a controller plugged into player two and you have that controller, press the triangle button, this will happen. You mean it just, this? It just blows up the bridge. <laughs> Before you would normally have to go out of your way to press the switch to uh, enter that area, um, that is also allowed in all glitchless categories of this game, fun fact, because it's not a glitch. It's just part of the game. We just happened to discover it 25 years late. It's kind of like an Easter egg, if you will. Uh, coming up here is a boss. Just kidding, it's not a boss. I meant to turn around. Sorry, the load times, you know how it is, what we want. Coming up here is a somewhat annoying boss, and that Soul Steel completely whiffed because his hitbox is not on screen yet. That is my bad. I have to be a little bit careful. My range uh, for the fist is not very large, and I'm actually at a HP value that is a tiny bit scary. Um, I think it is probably actually worth pulling out the shield rod and the dark shield to show off uh, one of those shield spells. So the, it's yeah, that guy's, uh, he's, he's my friend, I like him. Um, the shield rod in conjunction with the uh, any shield, if you press both the attack and um, shield button at the same time, it will do a spell. And depending on what shield you are wearing, uh, it does different things. That one is an offensive spell that does a decent amount of damage. Um, the hitboxes that it produces are a little bit inconsistent. And um, that's another empty relic check. So uh, yeah, what does this seed want from me, man? The fact that we're this deep and haven't found anything in the caverns is a little bit worrying. So um, I'm also going to actually grab is that close? Elixir. Elixir. Yeah, just so I have the opportunity to refill my HP in case things get a little bit dicey. Because coming up is a brand new skip. Uh, what is it, like a week old? This is discovered and like uh, popularized by uh, a combination of runners, Jammer and Fire1520, like I was talking about earlier. They found a new way. I'm going to save before this because it's actually pretty risky. Uh, it involves traversing the spike room that normally guards the spike breaker. Uh, there's a couple different ways to get through that room, but we recently discovered a way that doesn't involve grabbing uh, Power of Mist or grabbing the Bat Relic. So with neither of those relics, I'm actually going to get through uh, by taking advantage of a couple of safe spots that aren't actually um, covered in spikes, but look like they are. So <sighs> this is going to be a little bit of serious time. Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to damage boost, jump into a somewhat tight location. There it is. This spot is like two pixels wide. From here, I have to do a very pre uh, precise charge into a jump. Use the shield rod for iframes. Oh, no. I'm going to use a different shield. There we go. Different shields have different amounts of iframes. This one is a little bit more consistent. I should be getting through just fine. I just need to get to that light platform there. There it is. There you go. And this is what the room looks like. Those are all spikes. So taking advantage of uh, this game's generous use of invincibility frames. Another mana prism. Yeah, nice. nice. That is very nice. Okay. Taking advantage of this uh, game's uh, liberal uh, use of invincibility frames on all the spells gives us access to basically make ourselves invincible. And it's nothing! Nothing. I did all that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a seed, what a seed. All right, this is great. I, I, I love this video game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at least we get to show off the skip. Normally, uh, the reason why that skip is very much hyped is because that location oftentimes has uh, some of the most important uh, relics in the game because it is locked behind so many uh, other relics. That's basically how the complexity system works. Here, I'm going to just damage boost out of here. Very convenient that you can get out using the spikes. The spikes are designed to push you out of the room, so we can use that to leave the room faster. Um, but yeah, because that room is locked by so many different um, uh, relics, it means that it's a uh, high value location. So checking that early and often usually leads to information that you can use to help you route the rest of your seed, as well as um, just usually useful relics. But we got a little unlucky this time around, but that's OK. Uh, let me. Get this guy out of my way, please. Thank you. Just to the save room to refill my magic. All right. Coming up is, I think, the last possible location that is um, that the Jewel of Open wanted me to check. So this is probably something, unless the seed is doing something uh, very evil to me, which is very possible. This is randomizer after all. Here, I'm going to use a combination of the Tetra Spirit and the Dark Shield spell. Hopefully, this is eh, probably close to killing. I'll just do a second spell to be safe. This guy's not really scary at all. There it is. 
I do have to be careful with these shield spells because uh, it does take a huge chunk of my magic, and my magic is what's used to uh, maintain the wolf transformation, do all the wolf charges, and do all the gravity jumps. So I have to like constantly have a uh, management of like how much magic do I really have? And it's not like I have a solid number. I just have to look at that bar and be like, um, that looks like enough. Yeah, it's a lot of eyeballing. It's a lot of intuition and eyeballing, yeah. And this is Leapstone. There okay. we go. That's the... So this is what the, the seed wanted me to do to get flight. Uh, not only does this give me access to flight, it gives me access to a double jump and a dive kick, which uh, in this game is actually insanely useful for movement. I'm going to be doing what is known as front sliding. So out of a dive kick, um, you can slide into the floor if you let go of all movement uh, by the time you hit the floor, like that, and it slides you across the ground very, very quickly. Uh, it is like a... Um, very useful mechanic to, like, route around. Uh, it costs no magic to do, and it's, like, a fast way to get around, like, vertical sections. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice. And there's a... Pretty much all of the caverns, mines, and catacombs done. So we now know... Can you please? Okay, I'm just going to get past you this way. We now know that the uh, game kind of was heading us into this direction of you get flight and then your next goal was to get the rings, and then your next goal was to get to the Holy Glasses, and now it wants us to go to the second castle. However, there's one uh, location that is another high-value location, similar to the Spike Breaker location that we just uh, did with the Spike Hallway. Um, instead, it is the Silver Ring location, which is in the chapel, and I think that is where we're gonna go next, as well as checking a few other locations along the way, because that is another location that's normally guarded by uh, three different relics but we have access to it a little bit early by taking advantage of iframes like we did in the other room. I would say for now would be another great time for just a handful of donations. Absolutely. I have $50 from MT Fun. The wolf is a very good boy. He has a sword, but chooses not to use it as a kindness to Dracula and his minions. Good luck, DB. Thank you. I have $250 from Croc Advice. Always a great night for SOTN Lycanthrope Randomizer Run. Show us all how it's done, Dragon Blitz. Thank you so much for your donation. I have $100 from Zephy Foxy. Hey, DB, so exciting to see you live at GDQ again. Make sure you get the Joel of Open. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that to me? Uh, Joel's just a good friend of mine, and it sounds like Jewel of Open, so we made Phenomenal. an emote for him called the Joel of Open. Absolutely amazing. Here is definitely a Fist of Tolkis moment. Get to show off pretty much all of its moveset here. There's the Hadoken to chase him down. Here's the Fist of Fury, and there he is. That's phase one done. This is All Rocks, by the way. He won't be here for very long. Uh, oh, I'll hit him in the face, actually. There it is. There it is. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to finish his jump like a sore loser. All right, whatever. <laughs> there used to be a very rare soft lock that actually got patched out only in the randomizer, where if this guy's in the middle of specific attacks and you kill him at the same time, your game, uh, I guess it's technically not a soft lock, but you have to wait, I think it's like 36 real-time minutes before his animation ends for his death. So that's basically a soft lock in a speedrun sense. And there's Soul of Bat. I could have came here so much earlier. But it's fine. The Soul of Bat is like the other fast movement option. You're going to see me doing what is known as wing smashing a lot. That is me transforming into the bat and all of those like blue trails behind me. It does cost a lot more magic than the wolf movement, but it is uh, a little bit more reliable often, um, especially if you want to like maintain like height and like change your height while also going fast. Um, so it's going to be a combination of wolf and bat movement from here. I want to just point out next third piece of Exodia. There it is. I want to just point out that the Wing Smash movement, especially on original hardware, is not an easy feat at all. Like, we have analog sticks now in this day and age, but this is just straight digital D-pad that you have to really grind out full circles to, in order to continuously Wing Smash. Yeah, the uh, first release of this game, which is what the randomizer is based off of, uh, actually came out before the DualShock controller, so there is no analog uh, inputs that are accepted by this game. Let's go ahead and refill our MP with that other mana prism that we found. Because I do need a little bit of MP for this room, and then I'll put on the elixir for iframes. So I'm going to use invincibility from this elixir here to stand in these spikes, even though we don't have the spike breaker armor. This gives us access to this area uh, out of logic, and it is. Oof. Oh! All righty, all righty. Get to show off a little glitch called Badu card. I'm in the bat <laughs> form, but I still look like Alucard. <laughs> So the reason I'm groaning is because we now have to backtrack, or at least we should. It's very likely that the next um, important relic is going to be 
uh, in the location that is guarded behind the relic we just picked up, which is the merman statue. So we're pretty much going all the way back to the caverns. Let's go. <laughs> Backtracking in my Metroidvania, I never. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, this is uh, one of the reasons I actually do like the... Uh, I'm, I'm groaning, but in a sense, it does help you kind of like re-acquaint um, yourself with the game because I'm actually backtracking in a speedrun. Like, isn't that crazy? Um, most speedruns are optimized and routed such that like backtracking is minimized. Um, but since this is a randomizer, the route you make is uh, different every single time. Um, for example, uh, I've been playing the randomizer since it came out like... I want to say about four years ago, and I have never had a seed like this. Like, every single time is severely different. The kind of routes that you have to make and the decisions that you get to make um, are very impactful. And um, this is... No, it's faster to go this way. Like, for example, I had to make the decision right there. Is it faster to warp to a location that's kind of close to where I need to go, or do I just go there normally? And since I have this wolf movement, I decided it's probably faster uh, to use the wolf movement. But there's no way to know for sure unless you, like test every possible permutation of like relics and movement and like different places you need to go, which is near impossible. There's like thousands and thousands of combinations. So a lot of it is just intuition and just like playing the game a lot to make these kind of uh, gut calls in the moment. Love that dive bat movement, it's so great. Yeah, the uh, bat transformation, I mean, I know we've been talking a lot about the wolf, but the bat's cool too. So the bat transformation uh, is the only animation, uh, the transformation animation itself, is the only one that maintains momentum. So if I dive kick and transform into the bat, I maintain my momentum the entire time I'm transforming. And that's very useful and can be combined with the uh, speed that we get with the, the wolf charge. Um, we might be able to show that off uh, in the second castle, likely, because it does require like a very long hallway uh, um, to show it off, to gain enough speed with the wolf, but... Yeah. So we're back here in the caverns, and we're going to be opening up this like secret floor that um, I'm pretty sure only exists to sell strategy guides, because how are you supposed to find this normally? <laughs> <laughs> and hey, it's our friend the ferryman again. Oh, did you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, again, the cutscene's so good. The dialogue is so good. Um, I do get to show off a, a cool little skip. It saves like, I think a second. Um, there's a specific spot that I can stand and then do a wing smash that deloads a door that normally blocks your progress that the ferryman uh, is used to like lift up. Um, I still need the relic in order to do this skip, but it does save just like yeah, a second or two to not have to wait for the door to open. So I do want these bats out of my way. I'm gonna stand right about here, wait for him to do one more oar swing and then wing smash. And there's normally a door there and it's despawned, so. Small little skip. And there it is. Four pieces of right. Exodia. And, and because this was very uh, annoying to get, it was uh, locked behind so many different relics, we had to go all over the castle to get that Merman statue, and then it led to here. It is very much likely that that is the intended final uh, Vlad relic. So because of that, um, I now know that the final relic for me, not the final one in uh, the game's logic, but the final one that I will find, is just random. So we got to kind of check everything to find it. This would be a moment in like a race scenario where you now can do a little bit of math and say, OK, one random location is all I need to beat the game. So what are the odds? Oh, can you do me? Yeah, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> what are the odds that this really far out of the way location that I could check happens to be the exact thing that I need? Uh, in the second castle, as soon as you get there, there are 10 locations you can check. So at the very start, your information that you have uh, is everything is a 1 in 10. Um, as you gain more information, you can kind of suss out that things are more or less likely based off of uh, the information that you have. So a lot of runners, they will opt to take like a... Um, a risk to skip like a slow check in order to say it's just not going to be there and I'm going to save like five minutes. So that that's where the um, exhilarating part of doing races uh, in the moment is. And it, do I think my opponent is going to skip that check? Should I also skip it because I think they're going to skip it? And there's a lot of mind games and like uh, stuff that comes from that. Again, I cannot say enough. It is absolutely so much fun to race this. This has become a fan favorite race category. And, oh, Girthing! That's probably going to be my new weapon of choice, actually. That's another fantastic weapon that I didn't even know existed until I played the randomizer. I've been playing the game for, like, years. Didn't even know this uh, weapon existed. Uh, the holy glasses allow you to see the little chef's hideout, that little ball sphere at the top there. 
And then a couple of hits and maybe a soul steal or two. It, it, it only takes like what, eight hits? It's ten hits, ten yeah. Hits. Sorry. I was a little bit slow on the setup there. There's a spell setup that you can do that basically melts it instantly. Um, one of my spells just like didn't hit it in the, exactly the right way to stack the ten hits. So mm. I had to you know, finish the job manually. But yeah, we have to save Richter here so that way uh, we can go to the second castle. And uh, yeah, now it's uh, just a race uh, to the end of the game to find that one last relic. And there are 10 checks, and uh, there's a good possibility that uh, we are either finishing in the next like five minutes or finishing in like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, eh, probably not 20 minutes, like 15. Yeah. So it's all gonna depend on where this last relic is. And this is the second castle. The movement is a lot uh, more tricky because the terrain is, you know, it's upside down. It's, it's a little bit wacky. Uh, so this is where we're going to see a lot more bat movement. Uh, this Gurthang weapon that I have is the only weapon in the game that I'm aware of that powers up when you use the Dark Metamorphosis spell. So it's now doing 2.2x damage. Um, and normally this weapon is like doing like 50, 60 damage per hit, but now it's doing like 120 damage per hit. It also uh, increases the size of its hitbox. Uh, that's a useless relic. So the Gurthang is like a pretty mid-tier weapon, but once you use the Dark Metamorphosis and it's active, um, it actually becomes like S-tier, like one of the best weapons in the game. Uh, we full cleared first castle, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, left for Demon. Uh, oh, oh, wait. We didn't do the library. We didn't do the library. Yeah, okay. Because of that, I am actually going to go back for that. Uh, that warp. There is one location left in the first castle that I did kind of forget about. Um, what are the odds that it's there, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a 1 in 10, 10% chance. It's fine. And if we do find a library card, we can warp there instantly and check it. Um, so, yeah, we're, we'll be fine. Yeah, this is, this is where, you know, checking those nooks and crannies for, like, any sort of randomized item that they might put in the pool, this is where that would come into play as a very pivotal moment for instantly backtracking the library for that, for that other skip or the other check. Yeah. It's a, a risk-reward between being thorough and being fast. Alrighty, let's go ahead and uh, top off our MP because our bar is empty. So yeah, coming up is yet another boss. This is Medusa. She has a lot of um, damage resistance, so this might be a little bit of a longer fight even with our really good gear. Because um, overall, our gear is actually pretty darn good. Like, I can finish the game pretty comfortably with this. Essentially, a lot of the uh, tiered items, like I think of uh, weapons in like different tiers based off of how many cycles it's going to take for me to... That's useless. Um, how many cycles it's going to take for me to kill the final boss. Um, essentially, anything that is able to one cycle is, in my mind, good enough to beat the entire game. Um, anything that's a two cycle is like, it's fine. I'll deal with it, but I'd rather not. So, And this is a one cycle potential weapon, so I'm very happy. But yeah, this is basically just a, a boss rush from here, checking all of the, the locations. And if we find the last rel Vlad Relic, we find it. If we don't, um, you know. Might have to go back to the first castle. Yeah, very unlikely, but we'll see. Possible. If you have a keen eye, a lot of these uh, second boss enemies are, are really nice callbacks to original Castlevania. You saw the, the Darkwing bag, you saw Medusa, and now coming next is Aquadon. Do not let him touch you. Yep. Yeah, he is the, uh, the grappler of the game. Uh, if I do this manipulation properly, he should never grab me. There it is, yeah. Awesome. There you go. He will grab you and swing you around, spinning pile drive you into dust. He looks like he's not menacing, but trust me, he is. Don't let him fool you. He also takes forever to, you know, yeah. get off screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Benno sma uh, snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dracula, I don't feel so good. <laughs> oh, another familiar, <laughs> yeah. The familiars, unfortunately, are, I won't say useless. I would say unconventional if you're planning to go fast. They have their uses, but in most use cases, the seed doesn't really, like, need them. So uh, the animation of picking them up isn't worth it because uh, it's like a three-second uh, time loss every time you pick up a relic. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically only picking up relics that are like either going to speed me up in the long run or absolutely necessary. Here's another thing that's nice. When you're in uh, full movement with the wolf, when you have like the trails falling behind you and you're like that lighter color, uh, you're actually fully invincible. So we can just walk through spikes. Here is another important um, teleporter location. 
This teleporter location is right next to the final boss arena, so it's always worth picking up because once we find that last flat relic, we can just warp here and then finish the game a lot faster than like backtracking there the normal way. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and go for a little bit of me momentum preservation here to like slide up. Oh, that's so good looking. Yeah, that's the example of the bat maintaining its momentum during the transformations. It's like a very unique movement option that you wouldn't see outside of Randomizer, which is one of the reasons why I'm so stoked to be uh, showing showcasing this right now. Because there's so many things that are just like Randomizer exclusive that this game has to offer uh, in a speedrunning context. Yeah, Randomizer at a, at a main Games Done Quick event was a long time coming, and thank you everyone who had donated the $60,000 to make this happen. This is a callback to the Castlevania Three heroes. Uh, you know, Alucard's old friends, but except they're evil now because of you know, Dracula's evil magic. I'm not really scared of how much damage they're doing. They're not doing a whole lot, and that's all three of them done. Nice. If you don't have a high defense, that fight is kind of annoying. Eh, I'll grab it. This is mostly for the viewers at home to see how much damage I'm doing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for whatever reason, they locked the ability to see how much damage you're doing behind a relic. Normally, you get that relic very early in the game, but, you know, this is randomizer, so it's random. Uh, this room coming up here, if I do it well, it shouldn't lag very much. Otherwise, this is like one of the laggiest rooms in the game, so I'm gonna try and set up some precise... Okay, well, we're gonna see the lag now. Yeah, this game kinda shugs. It is a PlayStation game with uh, a lot under the hood. A lot going on under the and, hood. And under the lag is where you have to be the most deliberate with your inputs. Symphony of the Night has the most precise input reading of, I mean, like, honestly, even any of the made modern games today. I would call it a very honest input reader because it does not lie to you. If you pressed it, you pressed it. If you didn't, you did not. There's yeah. no shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, like, oh, I, you, it looked like you meant to do a quarter circle forward. I'll just help you out the rest of the way. No, it is. You either press the input or you don't. And right there, yeah, I'm doing 131 damage per swing, which is a lot more than I would be doing if I didn't uh, use the Dark Metamorphosis. And we can say goodbye to this Nightmare Fuel. Again, I want to get him off the screen as fast as possible, not just because he looks like that, but also because it causes lag while he's dying. And uh, nothing! Nothing! <laughs> yeah, I get to show off all the uh, cool movement tech that exists in this game as we go from boss to boss. This is kind of turning into an all-bosses run at this point. Say, production wants yep. to change this to all-bosses. <laughs> <laughs> all-bosses until we're ready to, to, to be done. Yep. This room is a little scary. Those guys do a lot of damage, and they're invisible unless you stand still. And as a speedrunner, we don't want to stand still, so most of the time they're fully invisible. I think this solidifies left side as the best side as well. So Yeah, left side is eating well tonight. So <laughs> when you enter the second castle, you have two options. You can go left or you can go right. The standard route has you going to the right uh, because it has the highest density of checks, so you're checking the most amount of things as quickly as possible. However, uh, it means that the left side, if you opt to go that way in a race scenario, right? Let's say uh, you're racing against somebody, they decide to go to the right, you decide to go to the left, uh, it now becomes kind of a 50-50 between who ends up finding that last flat relic first. So some of the more um, uh, adventurous racers will claim that the left side is the best side. <laughs> because it goes against conventional wisdom. Here, I'm going to be doing what is known as a save split. Uh, this is a pretty standard um, idea in this uh, for the randomizer specifically, because I'm going to save the game here. I'm going to backtrack a little bit to go to the uh, creature location. Shout out to creature. <laughs> if this becomes another creature scene. If okay. this guy has the last flat relic, I, I don't know what to say. It's got it. It's a 20% it's a chance at this point, but sometimes 20% is 100%. Um, but yeah, if Creature happens to have nothing, however, I can just reset the game, do a soft reset, and then I'm back to where I was uh, in that save location. So it saves all that time that I had to backtrack. And um, save splits are very good to do in a lot of scenarios. This uh, preset, you won't see them as often because the wolf movement is usually so fast. But this is one of those like really far out of the way locations that like a save split actually helps. And here we go. Everyone say hi to Creature. And, oh, he's doing uh, the worst creature. attack. Yeah. Rolling around at the speed of the... <laughs> yeah, he's going to do this for a little while. He'll stop eventually, right? Yeah, there we go. There, there he goes. Yeah. 
Wait, hold on. Don't clap yet, because I swear to God. <laughs> don't clap for him. Please don't clap yet. We, we don't like that guy. Oh, oh, no. There's the holy the symbol, a.k.a. the holy J. I'm getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. He can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Uh, well, that, that'll that lead us a little bit, well, I guess, underground in reverse, so... The, uh, it's like the floating catacombs is what they call it. Because it's like in the top of the castle, but it was also the catacombs, so it was the bottom at one point. Uh, the castle's flipped, by the way. I don't think we ever mentioned that. Spoilers. Inverted <laughs> castle, yeah. All right, so we're out of magic for the most part, and this uh, area is a little bit awkward. The um, terrain is not ideal for the wolf to move through, so I'm just going to be doing some classic backdashing and front slides. Uh, that damage boost is like 90% intentional. And, like, if I didn't get damage boosted, it's fine. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I completely forgot to do the safe split. Whatever. You That's did okay. do the safe split, I thought. Yeah, I oh, saved, and I was supposed oh, yeah. to reset. Oh, you did. <laughs> you did the first part. Yeah, I creature <laughs> melted my brain, and I didn't do it. So... Rando brain. Yeah, rando uh, brain is real. It's fine. I would have just reset to this location, and it would have saved me like 10 seconds. It's not that big of a deal. Um, surely we're coming up on the, the final relic soon, right? There's only four locations left in the second castle. So that's like five locations left in total. So 20% chance that each that this next relic is going to be the final one. I think that's how math works. Um, oh, you know what? I'm so silly. It's just going to be at Force of Echo, because it's always at Force of Echo. Duh. Let's so it's just going to be here. Surely it's just right here. Just a hop and skip away, maybe a bark. Yeah. This is another uh, great room to showcase the wolf movement. Um, you can do wing smashes in this room. It just costs a lot more magic, um, and it's a little bit difficult, and it's not here. Wow, I've been betrayed. <laughs> This is another example of transforming. I'll do it right here. Transforming into the bat after doing a wolf charge. By doing so, it maintains your momentum during the transformation. So you're like, during that transformation uh, animation, you can't really do anything. So as long as you're moving during that animation, you're, you're still going fast. And that's usually um, uh, optimal. Uh, this is Doppelganger 40. Uh, he is annoying if you let him be annoying. Otherwise, you can loop him in the corner because he refuses to block. Yep, y'all want to learn how to do an infinite? <laughs> That's it right there. Yeah, he's definitely the friend who's like, oh my god, you're just spamming the same move. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, coming up is the one of the laggiest rooms in the game. If I let it, oh god, I gotta get out of here. Oh god. All these sprites on the screen and they're all generating particle effects and stuff. Oh, I'll grab that. Yeah, this is worth grabbing. This is the power of mist. It is a relic that allows you to stay in the mist transformation for longer, and while you're in the mistransformation, you are invincible. And not only that, uh, the mistransformation is now um, pretty much uh, the MP cost for transforming into mist is like much, much, much lower now. So that's like the main reason you get it is so that way you can transform into the mist with like almost no MP loss. Alrighty, well we're coming up on the last two locations of the second castle. So either I got very unlucky and we're going back to the first castle, or it's going to be somewhere over here. Where do you think it's going to be, Bobby? We got Death, we got Gallimoth, and we got the Bat location. I, I, I honestly wanted it to be a creature just so we can have like a good meme-filled laugh. I hope it's not a Gallimoth. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping too, but uh, knowing my luck, it's going to be a Gallimoth. I want Gallimoth. <laughs> <laughs> Gallimoth is the secret super boss. It's not too difficult to deal with in this game because there is a um, manipulation to essentially beat him consistently every time. Um, but he's like really far out of the way. And if it's right here, there's a teleporter right next to us and it would be super fast to get to the end of the Come game. On. Let's see it. Is it the relic that we want? Spike Breaker. Spike Breaker is useful if I didn't do the skip to get to the Silver Ring location. <laughs> yeah. So it's useless to us now. Yeah, saving a lot of time by doing out of logic checks, but honestly it ended up working like really, really well in Dragon Blitz's Ooh. favor, the blood he's got. Yeah, it's like if you're trying to seriously speed run the randomizer, it is like required that you understand these like out of logic um, checks because it helps you save a lot of time on backtracking. Because otherwise, 
the intention of the seed was to come all the way to the second castle, get that spike breaker, and then go all the way back to the first castle to go to the silver ring location in order to get the mermaid statue, and then go all the way back to the caverns to find that last flag relic. Uh, but we skipped most of that backtracking. Uh, we would have skipped all of it if we found the last flag relic early, but... So now it's a 50-50. It is a coin flip. Either it is here or it's back in the first castle. So Chat audience, where do you think it's going to be? Is it in the second castle or is it going to be all the way back in first? And this is probably like kind of like the most heart thumping moments of the randomizer because we're either here for another five minutes or double that time. Yeah. This is one of those moments when you're racing that you're like, please just be here, please just be here, please. I just want this to be over with. Because it is stressful during races, that is for sure. Um, so I can't really do the... Uh, okay, I can try to do the infinite with the girthing buff, but it is not consistent. But I think it's worth it because it'll save a lot of time. A little bit of serious time here. There it is. Okay, we got it. So this is a stun lock um, that is super duper consistent uh, as long as he turns around. He has a chance to do a different attack that um, where he doesn't turn around, and it's really, really bad. It's uh, Doing that setup, it's random. There is a different setup that makes it hyper consistent. However, it wouldn't allow me to have the buff on my uh, sword, so I would be doing like significantly less damage. Mm -hmm. He's doing some headbanging here. <laughs> I do have to be careful, because if I do drop the, um, the rhythm, I do have to keep the rhythm up, otherwise uh, the infinite will drop, and uh, he is not fun to fight without uh, this exploit, that is for sure. I've maybe done it like a handful of times, like there legit. He also has the most health in the game, I believe it is 12,000. It's too much, it's too much. Now let's see if it's all for the last piece of Exodia. We just need that one ring of Vlad. If not, it is a terrible, tumultuous track. Yes. But we got oh. the final piece of Exodia, and it is officially now go time. All righty. That is uh, a weight off my shoulders and a weight off my shoulders for the game's estimate. Uh -huh. <laughs> because it would have been honestly a little tough to go underestimate. Uh, if I had to go back to the first castle. So uh, we got a little lucky there, which is nice. We won the coin toss. And now we can just go to the end of the game. So it's a little bit of backtracking. And then the final boss fights here in the Castlevania Symphony of the Night randomizer. Uh, this has been a lot of fun already. And there's a little bit left. So I just want to say thank you again to everybody who donated to allow me to showcase my favorite video game of all time and showcasing it in such a fun and unique way. Um, so yeah, this, is, this has been a blast. Yeah. Also, let me shout out the Castlevania City Tonight randomizer community. If you at home was interested in any of this, we do have C generators ready, willing, and able to uh, to get you into the fun. Just go to SOTN.io mm -hmm. and uh, get yourself a C generated. Join up on the Long Library Discord. There's a whole bunch of people of varying skill levels from all over the world ready and willing to race and get better, level each other up. This is what it's all about. Yeah, shout outs to the uh, Soten community, the randomizer community. You guys are amazing. I wouldn't be able to continue to like play this game and push it if it wasn't for other people also making key discoveries. Uh, huge shout outs to uh, Jupiter Climb. Jupiter Climb being one of the greatest uh, Symphony of the Night randomizer players of all time, currently sitting in grand finals of the current randomizer tournament. Um, and also the discoverer of a brand new glitch that uh, was found <laughs> yesterday. So he is doing all sorts of implementation and improvement in all sorts of different Castlevania games. And uh, yeah, just huge shout outs. All right, and as we uh, come upon unlocking the last arena, do we have our last couple of donations before we finish off this run? Absolutely. I have $50 from Dinner Dog. Here's a miserable <laughs> pile of dollars. Good luck, DB. <laughs> Huge DB. shout out to Dinner Dog. Dinner Dog also has a fantastic tutorial series to get you into understanding the randomizer speedrunning it. Huge shout out to Dinner Dog. Let's do uh, one more. Absolutely. I have $50 from Dracula Vlad Tepes. What is a randomizer? A miserable little pile of checks. But enough talk. Have a donation. <laughs> Thank you so much. And here we are in the final area. We have two boss fights left. And with this gear, it's going to be uh, pretty quick. That is for sure. 
Yeah, one of my favorite things about the randomizer is discovering new uh, item combinations to uh, beat bosses quickly. And uh, this is one of my favorites. The Girthang is a, a great weapon. I'm so f glad we found it. And there it is. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Very clean. That was a quick fight. That was a very quick fight. And uh, all that's left is Dracula, and then it will be time. Time does fly when you're having fun, that's for sure. And Randomizer is a heck of a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, my, uh, my plan is to dodge his main hand attacks. He kind of swings based off of the direction that you are uh, relative to the screen. So I'm going to bait him into an attack and then dodge it. Uh, I use the Dark Metamorphosis yet again to power myself up. And then we're just going to swing our sword a bunch, and he's going to die. So get ready on time in just a little bit here. There it oh! Is. And that was the one cycle, and there it is. Sub hour. That's pretty darn good. Considering we checked like yeah. almost every location, yeah, almost in the game. everything. Yeah. You didn't have to check uh, Soul of Bat. Well, uh, again, you thank you all so very much. I want to give a huge shout out to Bobby to for helping me commentate this run. Thank you so much. The Swarm as well for handling the tracker and uh, providing some commentary as well. And huge shout out to all you guys watching here live and watching uh, in the chat. Yet again, thank you so much for allowing me to do this. This was so much fun. And uh, yeah. And follow Dragon Blitz daily. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what, what were Lisa's last words?